Hello, welcome back to See What Happens, the podcast, and of course I'm with the lovely and talented Patricia Maya. And where do people find you again? They can find me on Instagram at I am Patricia Maya. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. That's right. Now I know where to find you. Yeah. And also the very talented and uh, slightly less lovely, but the lovely person. Thank you, Jamie Lasso. That's a when you say someone's ugly, you say they're a lovely person. That was funny. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like you're such a lovely person. No. You said that to a girl in bed. I find no, I, I remember I was. It was a weird. I thing, found I found sex very lovely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Like I, I I don't know why, but I had a, a lunch ten years ago with John Voigt, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, before he kind of went way off the rails completely. Uh, but like, and he said, I said, "Hey, you look good," and he said, "You know, people only say that when you look like shit." <laughs> Because <laughs> they have to think about the way you look, and they want you to feel better. Right. But they're actually saying you look like shit. That's true. No, that's not true. If there's a hesitation before the good. I said, you look good. Yes, there you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, welcome back to the podcast. And, uh, Thank I, you. What I've heard yes. is that the, when the three of us are together, it's pretty good, the podcast. So mm-hmm. now I get the three of us right here. And, uh, that's nice. Thank you, our, our producer. David Tanner's can take some pictures of us. Nice. And yes. uh, so, okay. So on this one, this is Patricia's idea for the podcast. And so why don't you go and explain what the concept is. And I then think we'll actually Jamie had something to say or something. What? Oh, I, I just wanted to say right before we, <clears throat> excuse me, started, yeah. Patricia noticed that my phone was cracked. Yes. Yeah. My screen was cracked. Which and kind I, of sums up everything that's happening in your life right now. It does. It does. I can't well, afford ours, to replace it. Ours is cracked, too. I know. Ours is cracked. <laughs> that's what... Sums up everything that's happening in all of our lives. That is something, though, I do love about Rob, mm-hmm. is that do you remember? So when I what? I was going to ask you guys, wh- how many screen cracks do you have to have <laughs> to replace your screen? <laughs> if it looks like a spider's web, then you got to get rid of it. Do Otherwise, you remember when Rob was talking on his phone, and you could literally see how an iPhone worked <laughs> because it was missing? It yes. was literally, you could see white, like chips. Yes. I just don't think it. It I was think, like Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it though that you didn't. If care. it works, it works. You know what? Do I, I, this is an old phone I have. It's like an iPhone eight or something like that. Oh God! I know. I'm it's embarrassed. Not that old. <laughs> what are like you nicer talking than mine. about? <laughs> it's not old. It's. I feel like you know if you go like like if you drive down to South America or Central mm-hmm. America, you see like older cars. The further you go back, it's like you're going back into mm-hmm. like the early '90s, late '80s mm-hmm. cars. That's how I feel about my cell phone. You look at my cell phone, you're going back in time to like the early 2000 teens. No. <laughs> Your phone is just like... It's a it's, nice phone. It's this one and the late, the latest one. Mm-hmm. You're just one generation there any, behind. There's no nine, right? The X is the... The X is the... Is uh, this an X? I don't even know. There, it's 10. I have this stuff on it, supposedly, to, to take it away the... I have these things that I put on it that I put on your phone that you let me put on your phone that supposedly takes away the radiation from going into your head. Uh, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I took all that off already. You Did let you? Me, you let me put it on <laughs> yeah. and then I, you took it all off. Did you take yours off too? Should you I be asshole? offended? Rob gave me one and it transfers your cancer causing agents to my phone <laughs> when I'm in the room with you. Yeah, that was the thing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, about well, I didn't but, explain the whole thing to you. <laughs> Rob, a, Rob put like four on mine. Yeah. You took and, them off. and you took them off and like, uh, uh, you, you were nice though. That you waited nice. till I was out of the room, and then you said you started peeling them off your phone. <laughs> Why did you peel them off? Do you not believe? Uh, no, they look weird, and there's like a cheap light. I don't know. Kind I, of thing. I think I'm pretty logical about a lot of things, and sometimes I just say, "Okay, I'll, I'll go with that." Somebody yeah. said to me, "Like this is from Russia. It is uh, from a satellite that absorbs radiation." I go, "Okay, give me one of those." I mm-hmm. said, "It looked like it's. Uh, it didn't look like that. It looked like actually chips in on your phone." That people could find you and get, get more financial, information. Get your financial <laughs> the paranoia. It's in par- but do you know what? The, this is Patricia, the, the you know, mm-hmm. the paranoid. Yes. But are you less paranoid about the damage it could cause your brain? No. Yeah, like, like for instance, the 5G. That, that I'm just like you with the sharks. You don't give a shit. <laughs> so like the 5G. 5G. Um, mm-hmm. Is it out there already, 5G? What? This, For uh, what? No, it's, it's just this new... Um, um, current that's going through all of our bodies at this moment. Five G is the top, right? Is that the top? Well, five G, but it like it, but it it has like some potential, uh, you know, problems because it's going through your body, so it can have cellular, you can have cellular damage mm-hmm. by like waves, radio waves going through your body and kind of heating mm. up your cells. And- but as a counter argument, don't videos play really fast and look great? 
<laughs> yeah, everything's a trade-off, I guess. Yes. But shouldn't this shit, like, I mean, America's one of those countries, like, we literally have, like, 88, over 88,000 unregulated... Um, Everything. Uh, 88 uh, unregulated... It's going to be racist. Um, What's he going to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's unregulated chemicals. Oh, Hmm. 88,000. They just, they like for all the skin products and stuff, they just don't have to do anything. You know, we saw this amazing documentary on DuPont on Netflix mm-hmm. called The Devil We Know, which basically how they, one company in Virginia, West Virginia, poisoned the planet. Yes. Every human being has these. What? Uh, it's mm-hmm. called C8 mm-hmm. in our cells, in our in our bodies. In Through our what? Um, and they uh, said like, well, hey, it doesn't water. necessarily cause cancer. I say, hey, asshole. I never gave the okay to have that shit in my, but if you, and it's still Teflon, they, they just renamed it like, um, what did they rename it? Gen now? X. Gen X, but it's a similar chemical that's also killing rats and tests and killing humans. So, you know, it's just, it's the, like, until they. It causes st- deformities also. Until they start, you know, taking like the people uh, who run uh, the boards and the CEOs and the, um, the officers of pharmaceutical and chemical companies and start prosecuting them. Mm-hmm. Like like the opioids and uh, you know the Viox, all the guys who killed at least forty thousand people from Viox, they covered that up, and that was, uh, I believe, uh, I believe that was Merck. Mm. Yeah. Until they do that, then nothing's going to change. So this anyway, five G. Getting back to that, mm-hmm. it's going through racing through our bodies. Yes, you get better. Um, Feels good, five G. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, like this is one of the countries that they don't test the stuff first. Like Sweden's one of the few countries that goes, we'll have to check it the first, and then if it works, if it's safe, then we're going to do it. So they test stuff. Yeah, they go. The DC is not. I think safe. that's the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Seems like it's fair, right? Did you see that thing on the internet? Was it was like supposedly it's got an egg and two cell phones in the middle, and the egg's cooking? What? I don't know. It could be fake. It's one of those things. Like <laughs> <laughs> it sounds crazy, but is that why you have the little things? I have on things. Here's the things, little things that they, that absorb that supposedly that absorb information from his phone. <laughs> it's got a weird chip on it, doesn't it? It is. It I looks, like how Patrice looks, is like. I don't care what happened to that egg. Those things look weird. <laughs> uh, she, it looks she, suspicious. She took it right out of her phone. Didn't give a shit. I was trying to protect her. <laughs> Rob, you'll know the answer to this. What's what's this raging debate about sunscreen? I thought sunscreen was good for you, and you put it on. Well, here's the and thing. And then now everyone's telling you, it's just kids well, worse for the sun. Vitamin D, vitamin D3 specifically, you need to it's have good this. good to get vitamin D. You have to have vitamin D. It's got to go. Also, you First know. Not, you can, it's not good if you, like, just if you, burn yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for I hours. Mean, so you have a combination of, like, I used to get burned so bad as a kid, the skin would come off in sheets. Mm-hmm. Like the whole sheet would come off of my back. I've mm-hmm. had that happen once. Yeah, you know, I remember so, you, you told us that. And so, but so you don't want to get sunburned, but at the mm-hmm. same time, you need to have sun as part of your immune system. Mm-hmm. Is sun. So what we've been doing is slathering all these things that have like also these chemicals that just go right into your bloodstream. And the idea is, well, should we should check what those chemicals are. I think what you could do is you could use clothing. Mm. And then also, but if you're going to go swimming, you know, you, you try not to hit during peak time, but it's important for kids. Also, also not wearing sunglasses all the time because that also prevents, I mean, that's how you get your vitamin D in is also, you know, through your eyeballs. Interesting. I'm not a scientist, but uh, through your eyeballs, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you get some. <laughs> but it's important to absorb some, you know, but 20 minutes is good. Okay. But so you have like a vitamin D deficiency in uh, like in Canada where it's or where we may move. Another state, you know, if we move up um, to Washington, you know, it may uh, have, uh, you know, they may not get as much sun. Yeah. So that that's, uh, you know, it's important to, to, to get that. However, yeah, so there's... Um, it's like zinc, right? Isn't there like a new, you can put zinc on your face? Yeah, some of that, the, the zinc oxide supposedly has uh, says, uh, I've, had, I've heard that it's, it's toxic in, right. on certain levels, and I've heard that it's not as toxic as some of this other stuff. Like benzo eight or whatever the hell the hell that that but, shit but is. But what about like if you go on vacation, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we're talking about like our daily basis here. So it's like yeah, twenty minutes of sun, blah blah blah. But what if you're on vacation with your kids? Yeah. And you don't want them to get sunburned. So I think there are some good alternatives. Uh, there's this I brand think... that I like. Mm-hmm. That's um, kiss my face. Uh, the other thing is there's almost <laughs> kiss my ass. It probably wouldn't be. Probably wouldn't be as popular. <laughs> kiss my ass toothpaste. <laughs> they probably wouldn't sell put, it at Whole Foods. Let me put that on my mouth. Kiss my ass. It's a little bit. It's a little bit better, but like again, it's you a know, little bit how better. How much chemicals? 
at a certain point, your body is, you know, is going to be influenced by the chemicals that goes into your bloodstream and, 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 and could cause some, some, some ill effects. But you don't know? you think like once in a while, like if you're on vacation and then you just detoxify the shit out of your system and that's it? Most people don't. I think it's important to do a daily detox. You're right. And don't things not count on vacation, like cheating on people? <laughs> and uh, like lotions and eating bad Over, vacation, you can alcohol get to do overdose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what are you talking about, you Jamie? I just heard you could do things on vacation; they don't count because it's not all the time. <laughs> no, you're right, Jamie. You got a point. You're an you immoral. Got a ba- point. You're an immoral bastard. He's, no, as long as it's the old thing, like as long as it's in the parking lot of the comedy club, it's not really cheating. <laughs> <laughs> it's that old thing. Jesus. Yeah, that was in our vows. <laughs> Okay, so getting back to uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th- I think you got to weigh like slathering chemicals and like in the kids. We've never had such immune problems with our kids until we started slathering, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so much, uh, you know, sunscreen and everything. But I do think, like you know, I mean, the the um, the good news is that I, I do think that skin cancers are the are the easiest ones to fix or to cure if you get it early enough. So, but I do think you need to be. They're, they're, we're putting. We're using too much. I think right now, I think it's an overreaction and avoiding the sun is not as good as uh, spending some time in it. And uh, this, none of this is medical advice that I'm going to be responsible for. So you do your own, do whatever the hell you believe out there. <laughs> Slather whatever you need on yourself. Yeah. Okay, so today, today's topic is, is Patricius. So you were, ta- you were going to talk about like what? Yeah, so I was wondering, mm-hmm. guys, like if you couldn't do comedy for whatever reason, Mm-hmm. Right, like let's Lack say of that interest, no audience. I'm just speaking for myself. <laughs> <laughs> now let's say that something happens, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever, and you, you, comedy clubs close. You're not gonna get to do comedy anymore. Okay, what would you do? Like, how would you join the workforce again? By doing what? <sighs> Shit. Like, what are you guys good at? Um, I had twelve jobs in 1982. Yeah, okay, doesn't count. What are you good at now? No, I was I was horrible at all of them. <laughs> Do you remember how to, what what you had twelve jobs in one year? Yeah. I mean Adam Sandler was saying he sucked at every job and it's like I totally I agree. I sucked at every job too. I did like I painted houses, I sold shoes, I worked in a hospital, you know. Do you think if you had just picked one you would have been better at it? Were you spread too thin? <laughs> no, I just it was like what happened is I was you know, starting to do stand up comedy. I was like eighteen, nineteen, you know. And I was like, uh, I, but I wasn't making any money doing that, so you had to do something to make money. But as like, as soon as I would do something for a couple of weeks, I go like, "Fuck this! I hate this." So well, you left? Were you weren't fired? Or a little bit of both? Sometimes, mm-hmm. like I'd work in a job and I'd be great for like the first day, and then I'm like, "What well, the second day? I got to do this again? Mm-hmm. The same thing?" You know. So, um, and then you know, you started to make like a little bit of money. Like I, I think I remember though, my job, you'd make like twenty five dollars as an MC somewhere, and I was like, okay. I get enough of these. It's enough. To, enough of these twenty five dollars. I'll be all right. Right. You know. But but if I if it all fell apart, God, I don't know. I mean, including I couldn't do be a writer either. Probably. Yes. No. Like let's say that nothing related to show business. Sandwiches. What would you do? I think I can make some killer fucking sandwiches. You're a good cook. I can make sandwiches. Like I could be a short order cook if I had to be, but not after seeing that fucking Dupont show. Now I can't use those nonstick pans. <laughs> Can we, is anything? But let's, okay, but with, yes, that's a good one. You Sandwiches. are you're a good cook. I could be a short order cook. I could be. I could make. I could, I, I could do. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could run like a, an organic grocery store. Yeah, I could do that. Mm-hmm. I think he will like that. I still might do that. You by would. The way. You would be. <laughs> you still. You still give uh, unrequested advice to people. Yeah, I know. That's annoying. Is that a job? <laughs> no. Can you make money at that? Um, Probably yes. Well, like I said, that's what we talked about last time. Was that, like my my niece is a, a life coach. With like, I just like you know how the who the, who, who is, first of all who needs a life coach one and a, a b <laughs> two <laughs> three squared. How the fuck do you know who to go to for life coaching? I mean, that's a lot of you know. I don't. What is what what happens in life coaching? By the way, how, well, how does this that is my start understanding off with? of it. Because I I do have a friend who is a life coach. Now, does that friend got her shit together? In all seriousness, no. Exactly. Oh my god, that's some. So balls. you have another friend. You have another friend who's an actual doctor. Yes. In sexology. Yeah. Sylvia Almedo. Mm-hmm. And now she's a genius. Yes. And I really like her. Mm-hmm. And she gets good advice. Like I have a friend. Yes, she's very she's similar. Good. I actually put Sylvia on mm-hmm. on a Dr. Drew Pinsky show. 
Yes. Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. He's another guy who's kind of a sexologist, drugologist mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. A doctor. Um, now, they know what they're doing. They, they've had a ton of experience. They've had whatever. But this friend of yours is a life coach. Why, how did that happen? No, I mean, she's learning. And She's learning and training by giving it. advice to other no, no, people no, no, about no. their lives. You learn on the job. <laughs> <laughs> She's not doing it yet. She's, She's a life. Oh, I thought you were saying she's not doing it good. I thought you were going to say. <laughs> she's a life assistant coach right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. I think. I think that's a bad idea. But how do you become like this your friend? It, can you go to college and no, major in life coach? No, that's the whole point. Coach? You just sign up and say, I'm a life coach. And then <laughs> no, that's no, it. No, 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 no. Actually, you need to do it like an online class. An online? That's even worse. <laughs> amazing. Who are these fucking people? That's, that, that, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Now I hate these people. You can't be friends with that person anymore. <laughs> I'm forbidding you to be friends with that person. No, so, I, so what is she? She does a life thing? If she does a, No, she's just studying for it. She's studying to be a life coach. What is, yeah. and I'm not trying to be funny at all, but what, if you're a life coach, does it mean you call the person and they're like, hey, fucking go get him today? Is that like a life you know coach? You I psych him up? You know what I think it is? Because I have another friend who is actually a very good um, psychoanalyst. Okay, that's different. That's real. And then she is. Uh, she was doing life coaching. But she, this is a, a like a real psychoanalyst, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was explaining to me yes. that what she was doing with these clients that she was helping is basically they help you organize. Yeah, that makes your, sense. Your yeah. goals, okay. mm -hmm. and they help you reaching you know reaching them and by also, making a strategy. They, for it. they mm -hmm. also can reassess and help you recategorize your ideas and thoughts. In other words, you may think like you're. Um, uh, you may interpret something that's happening in your life in a way that somebody can challenge that and mm -hmm. maybe suggest that there's another interpretation to it. There's another way of dealing with it. You know, maybe you're not as bad a person as you think you are. You're not as stuck. Or if you are stuck, and help you get unstuck. Just to help you to um, uh, a professional organizer yeah, for but, your thoughts. But, but it goes even deeper because, for instance... No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, Not me, I, they, as a professional life they coach. They hold you accountable for things. That, that's, that's what this is about. Like, for instance, if I go to a life coach, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I tell her, look, I want to learn uh, or, or I want to go back to school. Mm -hmm. And then uh -huh. she will be, okay, when do you want to go back to school? Oh, shit, I don't in, like that. in six months. So she uh -huh. would already schedule a plan of like how to find the best to school. And mm -hmm. then she would call me and say, hey, did you find the school? Like you were That sounds like a mother. Exactly. It's what it it's is. It's like a life mom. It's like a life mom. <laughs> yes. That's what it is. Okay, Absolutely. Well, I don't mind that then. This sounds like a personal secretary. So, so, so. They, that sounds good. They get on. Yeah, exactly. But, because they help you reaching your goal. But I don't know. Well, if that that's doesn't sound same. like a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, what it sounds like to me, somebody's giving you advice who is not qualified mm -hmm. or should not be giving advice because they don't, don't have think, their own shit together. Yeah, but I don't think they give you advice. I think it's just like that, like organizing your life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My ass just fell asleep. Did it? <laughs> I shouldn't be giving any ass advice because my ass just fell asleep. It's asleep. Oh. I just fell asleep. I don't anyway, know what so so you would be like making sandwiches, going back to. I don't know. I mean, if if I feel like. What else are you good at? I think Rob and I'm. I think you could be a life coach. Earlier today, I was hitting you with something. I think I could. And Rob was what's helping that? me what's reframe Dave, what's, my ideas. What's our producer saying? Huh? Oh yeah. Well, I think I'd like. I would. I wouldn't mind teaching. That's true. Mm. You're a good teacher, actually. I wouldn't mind teaching something I don't know anything about. So anything. Like being a life coach. <laughs> <laughs> you no, but like, like recently history. a friend of mine, my friend uh, Joe Vesey, has been, uh, my, my buddy Joe, has been, you know, I've been his life coach recently. Not his life coach, but just in recent things. Mm -hmm. He's my buddy. He's a very funny comedian. He works with Adam Sandler. And he's just like, you know, whatever he's going through he calls me on the phone and i talk to him and i said but that's a friend i would never say i'm a life coach yeah i just think it's like because I, you're not <laughs> <laughs> neither is that your friend but he also doesn't know that he doesn't also know that i'm his friend i'm telling about his stories now on, on the podcast right no but I, I do think that like it's a friend mm -hmm. you know but but i think a life coach maybe it's it's like is that like a, another way of saying psychologist no because it's different it's, yeah because it's, it's not qualified yes that's correct mm. <laughs> But yeah. I mean, I think it's like if it's somebody to actually help you get um, organized, uh, whatever. I think that's good. I didn't yeah. realize it was somebody helping me get organized. I thought it was somebody giving you advice about your life, like, no, you should definitely, definitely move to India. Yes. Right. That's what I thought. No. Calcutta. 
No, it's just it's it's you tell them what you want and they mm -hmm. help you organize it to achieve it. As far as I know, so but it's anyways. like a professional organizer. Yes, like but the person who came over to the house and put up the the pictures in the walls here. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So she's not telling me how to lead my life. <laughs> <laughs> so Jamie, what about you? Jamie, what would you do? Because I I think I could make sandwiches pretty good if I had to. I think I could uh, mm -hmm. be a singer and a lounge singer if I had to. If oh, somebody... you could totally be a singer. Rob could That's be a true. singer. You can sing. Yeah. I wish you had started with me and then ended with Rob. <laughs> no, so uh, I just what, don't what, have any. What would you? What would you feel like you could? I mean, like, well, you were used to work in radio. I used to work in radio, um, so yeah. If that if that dying medium came back, I could do something <laughs> in that. I think I think I would have to go. I think I, I would want to be. I would always want to be like a therapist. Really, like a which is the like perfect example of someone not having their shit together. You, you, trying to teach you'd be people. great. You can say, "Here's how, what I would do. Don't do this." <laughs> You could say that to people. No, but you know what? Though, but but you studied uh, psychology. Mm -hmm. I did. I enjoyed it. How much did you really study psychology? I have a degree <laughs> from a real place, brick sounds and mortar. Like a, sounds like an interesting way to tell somebody. Brick and that. mortar, like not online, psychology degree. What school? University, a uh, University <laughs> of oh, Fredonia, oh. State University of New York. Oh yeah, right, Fredonia. State University, Fredonia. What I always wondered is, though, say I want to be a therapist or something. Fredonia, this, Freud, oh. Fredonia. Why don't they just go, if it's psychology, Freudonia. Freudonia. But, like, what about the fact that I don't remember any of that shit? Mm -hmm. But like, you kind of do. No, to me, do. I think those stuff that, that, like, you know, remember the stuff in college that you learned the short time that I was there? It's like, this doesn't, I'm not going to, and then, like, years later, it kind of comes back. Yeah, that's true. And also, it's always easier to give advice and to understand other people mm -hmm. rather than doing it to yourself. Yeah, because you're not emotionally attached to it. Yeah. yeah, that's true. You're not going through that, and it's easier to see. It's easier to see, probably. So, like, what? So you. So you get, would be a psychologist. So I'm not even confident. I was been racking my brain. The first thing you do is go. I'll drive Uber. I know how to drive. Okay. I, think, I said I sandwiches. Think you, could be, you could be a good personal trainer. Personal trainer. I would enjoy that. Maybe. Yeah. You'd be a personal trainer. Like, you know a lot Uber about driver. working out. I could do those two you things. You could be an Uber personal trainer. I was a personal you can trainer have, for You a can while. drive somebody, <laughs> and, train and then them. when they get there, and train them on the way while you're driving. It was amazing. Yeah. If you add one more thing to that, you're a life coach. <laughs> Three things as a life coach. <laughs> what about Patricia? What do you think? Uh, I don't know. I would cook, probably. You also. could be a baker. You never I had... could be a baker. You're right. I would make cakes and mm -hmm. but decorate you, them. This is a stuff. relatively new... Mm -hmm. talent of yours i mean mm -hmm. i think you've you've gotten confident with it because uh you had to because mm -hmm. you had kids yeah exactly. so you had to start cooking and then mm -hmm. you wanted to cook healthy foods for the kids yes that's and correct stuff, so you knew it was in there yes uh, but then you got good at it what, what was the Fuck what, yeah <laughs> but what was the point <laughs> where you feel like you got like you crossed over where you had confidence in it um the baking your baking is ridiculous i think my baking is good I would probably open a little, you know, like bakery mm -hmm. or... Yeah. yeah, it's the shit. Your baking mm -hmm. is like, whew. Yeah. Well, Do you find it um, almost therapeutic? I feel like when I watch is. both of you guys cook, you really kind of savor the moment. I don't know. You seem to enjoy mm -hmm. what you're doing. I'm more yeah. like, I want this done as fast as mm -hmm. possible. I will but. say, like, I had no confidence in the last thing I tried, and it came out pretty damn good. Was, what was uh, it? I just said, let me just cook something that's like crazy. And something just... easy. So I just had to cook Peking <laughs> duck. Really? Yeah, I said let's figure this shit out no. and let's go. Let's go with this because it, it just seems like, well, come on. How do you begin? Where do you get the duck? You just go to the store. You know, actually, you just go to the closest lake. We went to the, I was, <laughs> <laughs> with a bag of rocks. You know, it's funny that you say that, but I was in San Francisco in the early '80s when I was doing those shitty jobs, and like there was a, at that time. It was the late '70s, early '80s when there was a big influx of Vietnamese people coming over from Vietnam. And they would go out to the park, and they were new Americans. They were new to America, and they would go out, and they'd go trap ducks in the park. Holy shit! And they, you know, so you'd be sitting there. So some guys feeding the ducks. <laughs> These other guys are catching the ducks. Oh my god! Oh, wow. That's the thing about like being Asian. You know, it's like uh, I was with my. I remember um, I was with my uh, cousin, and we were fishing. Another Filipino dude. And we're fishing on a boat. We're out on a boat, you know. And then, like, we're fishing, get the fish and everything. And then, like, and then with a bunch of a bunch of uh, salmon fishing, you know. And then a bunch of sardines came by, like a ton of them. Like it was one of those waves of 
the, and mm-hmm. then that's when you that's when the salmon are chasing them. And then the dolphins came, and these beautiful dolphins, and everybody on the boat was like, "Oh, beautiful!" You know, and this is you know nobody had their cell phones before. Cell phones is oh beautiful. Some people had those instamatic cameras or whatever, and it all these things. And my cousin, who's Asian, the only <laughs> an Asian person would do this thing. If I just had that that gaff, that the big hook, I could hook one of the dolphins. Holy shit! And it's like you're gonna kill, what? They're gonna kill you. <laughs> It's a dolphin. This is like a. It's like a person. He he already had like the mayonnaise in one hand. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only an Asian. Like it's a fishing. You know anything? As 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 our. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> you imagine. You're with your kids, and some guy just kills a fucking dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, exactly. How horrible! Oh my god! But like our good friend, you know, a Tiffany's mom. Yes, Teresa. Teresa, Teresa Huang. She said, uh, you know. Chinese, we eat anything, but we anything crawl, swim, fly. Only thing that we don't eat that flies is airplane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, she's joking, but yeah. she meant it. Amazing. Yeah, that's true. So, so anyway, um, so, yeah. Okay, so what else? But what do you think you're good at? Like, I think you're good at cooking. I uh, so I was cooking. I cooked this thing the other day. The the, the duck. Oh yeah, because so, my you kid were likes. About that. My kid, thank you. My kid was, um, that's how gripping my stories are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's just, you know what? I totally got distracted. No, no, but my I, ass actually just woke up to listen to the story. <laughs> <laughs> so we had the, uh, so I looked it up online. So what it, and, mm-hmm. and I, and usually, and Patricia will tell you this, usually I never go by instructions. Like literally, we had to put up, a, we were in Boston and I got this, um, Patricia sent me to this to, to Kmart. Okay, it was Kmart, listen to me, Target, Kmart, listen to me, what an idiot. I don't think Kmart's <laughs> exist anymore. She sent, I think they do. Some they of them. They do? Yeah. I haven't seen a Kmart in a long time. She sent me to Montgomery Wards to mm-hmm. get, I'm sorry. She sent me to uh, Sears Robux mm-hmm. to get it. She sends me to Target to get a little pool for the kids. A little pool. Okay. Like a little, little inflatable, in- inflatable pool. Like an inflatable, yeah. It's, it's, it's really tiny hot. ones. It's really yeah. hot in Boston. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. filming a movie out there. And so um, she sends me there and I go there and I look for it. Let's show him the picture of what you got. Okay. Okay. What's the budget? Hold what were you hold picturing, it. Hold it. Patricia, when you told him to get uh, this? What were you picturing he'd spend? It was twenty dollars. Okay. What the little pool that I okay. told Rob to, if you know, like that, I asked him well, to I, buy. I spent six hundred dollars. Wow. All right. So check this out. Okay, let me get it here. Is there oh. a girl with a bikini that comes with it? The hell? <laughs> six hundred dollars. <laughs> there it is, coming, coming. Yeah. In. No, I saw that and I was like, What did he come home with? Is a gigantic pool? You're yeah. going to see what he came home with there, because it's it. ridiculous. It's a water slide. And this, 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 the kids of the water slide. The kids loved it. It's gigantic. Oh, wait a minute. Let, 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 let that open. It looks like something you'd see at a park. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's the biggest thing. And it's got like a pool. Anyway, it took me four hours to put it together. Well, they're enjoying it. Oh, so they enjoy it's it. It's beautiful, yeah. So anyway, I spent six hundred bucks on that. There that was thing. like a little bit of a difference between you know what mm-hmm. I asked him to get for the girls. And is this com? Would you say it's a common? Were you surprised? Look how cool this is, though. <laughs> look how cool this is, though. Look at it, guys. That's See, she's look at the pool it's in. That's amazing. It's got a place to climb. It's got a place for bugs to get in. Yeah, you don't need yes. Well, no, I was not surprised. Did you hear the question I asked Patricia? Because whenever you're like in therapy, you're supposed to ask yourself, like she sends you to buy a $20 pool. You come home with a $600 slide, you're supposed to go, am I surprised? <laughs> <laughs> Were you surprised? No, I wasn't. All right. but, but the thing about it was like, <laughs> I first of all, I'm, I'm of this ilk. Mm-hmm. I don't even know that you use words. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what does that mean? Ilk. ilk. Of this kind, mm-hmm. where like just, I, just say kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm of this kind. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gonna look up fucking ilk just so you <laughs> fucking give me this shit. Okay, somebody look up. We look up ilk, David. So the thing is this: mm-hmm. I don't want to come back with nothing. I go over there. It's like it's like a hundred degrees in Boston, right? Mm-hmm. Ninety, whatever. And like I don't want to come back with nothing. I've, they've already got the idea that they're gonna get a pool. They, you know, Patricia, right. Daddy's gonna come back with a pool. And I go over there, and of course they're all gone. Oh. And I said, "There's only there was like one thing left, and it was a little bigger than I what I, I thought. It was a big, it was a heavy, big box. I didn't realize how big, but like uh, there was this uh, water 
a pool and slide. Was it on display in the store? <laughs> well, could you see it, or did you no, not know it, until? It was just literally like a cardboard box, and okay. it had like a miniature thing, you know, my glasses mm-hmm. I don't have on. So, ilk, breed, class, description, uh, feather, genre, kind, kind, mm. like, manner, nature. Okay, species, mm-hmm. sort. Mm-hmm. Anyway, ilk is right. Mm-hmm. So, Thank you for telling me. All right, so then, um, I, uh, being of my ilk, I come back with this thing, and then, like, I, I realized I was the smartest decision I made besides spending six hundred dollars was to get like a, a hose, oh, just nice. in case, so that it, you know, mm-hmm. so it doesn't whatever, which ended up being important. But I didn't get what I thought I, sh- I, I thought I already had was a hammer, so I figured, ah. Uh, I feel like if you need a hammer to put together your inflatable pool, you've spent too much money on your inflatable pool. <laughs> like, what is the hammer for? Well, you have to nail it down because it's like a balloon. You oh, know? okay. You ever see those things? You know, I'm sure it's online when it's you're to, not. It's to kill yourself after spending all that money. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know how you're what you're watching lightning people getting hit by lightning and you're on your videos and enjoying that. Yeah. Or, almost or, getting hit. Almost getting hit. Well, there's a difference. <laughs> yes. Different so. kind of person. Different kind of ilk watches people. <laughs> Well, there's also, I'm sure, videos of like these um, inflatable bouncy house places that are Mm -hmm. flying away because they're not nailed down. So you have to like have like a stake, right? Like a stake. Yes, Yes. we got these stakes, and I, I I didn't have a hammer. No, because I thought I saw I saw at the house we were renting in Boston there was a tool case. I said that's got to be in there. Mm -hmm. I opened it up and it was like little. It was like what was in there exactly? Like pom poms and an eye, you know, like those little eyeballs. Like craft items. Craft, craft, yeah, Mm -hmm. craft. So you went back to the store. You go, no, hey, I, no, what's I your I most expensive go. hammer? <laughs> <laughs> now, somewhat of my ilk, guess mm-hmm. I'm going to just use something else as a hammer. So I went and got a... Pot. A pot. Really? A cooking pot. And ping, ping, <laughs> ping, <laughs> ping. Super annoying for the neighbors mm-hmm. for hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I had to hammer all those in, and I was drenched. Because it was 100 degrees, and I literally... You know, when you know, you know you're soaking wet when, like, your hat is soaking <laughs> wet. My whole hat... <laughs> It was just sopping wet. And I got all, you know, and then, like I said, I'm putting this, this all the mm-hmm. together. I'm putting this shit together. And then, like, and doesn't, have, doesn't, and like you would know this because they didn't have instructions or they kind of had instructions, but I said, I don't need to look at the instructions. It I had hate instructions. It. it didn't have well, everything comes with instructions. <laughs> Sorry, everything. <laughs> it didn't have, it didn't tell you what to do. It just showed just, you. You had to read well, it. Well, like it didn't actually tell it you. It had like three words per picture. Yes. So I said, fuck it, I'll just figure it out. Hit with pan. (laughs) (laughs) That was another one of those. So I hit the pan, I get that in there, and I I blow the thing up. And then you got to turn, I turn the water, the hose on, so to fill up the little pool area. And then um, you have to like take this other cord of where the water goes with the hose. Mm -hmm. And then you have to put this. So I'm looking for places to put that around, and I kind of find it. And it did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. But then I hammered it down, everything, and Mm -hmm. panned it down. Yeah, panned mm-hmm. it down, but the pot, potted it down, mm-hmm. potted it down, and then the kids had, had an incredible time. Yeah, but the, my point is, getting back to this, the longest getting story ever to told. The, yeah, mm-hmm. the Peking duck. Holy was, shit! I forgot Patrice, about the Peking uh, duck. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's why I forgot about it. That was this episode. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, you assholes. Here's the deal. So usually I, sa- I said I'm not going to, and same with the Peking duck, my instinct is to not go with the instructions. Yes. And Did so- you cook it in a hammer? <laughs> <laughs> You're a prick. So the thing was, I took the, so I, this time I said, I'm going to do exactly what they say. So I, I literally went out and got an actual duck. Okay. I didn't do like chicken or nothing, and uh-huh. I went like, I'm going to do the exact recipe. So he went, and I was with David, right? So we went to a place, and uh, it was a frozen duck, and I said, oh, it's not going to work. And then uh, David called another Whole Foods, and there was a, like, they got one here. We got one duck here. And then uh, we, by the time I got over there, he was already all set to go. He was already defrosted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, whatever. So I went in and I said, I'm going to do this thing. And I got all the spices. And the, the, believe it or not, the surprise spice you would never guess that the Chinese would use for their Peking duck. Hmm. Nutmeg. Really? Yes. So the thing about duck is one time, the last time I cooked duck, I've, I've, been, I've lost all my confidence in cooking duck as mm-hmm. i try to cook it um duck two ways you press duck is a french very french pr- way to do it mm-hmm. i also like cooking duck two ways which is like you pan sear it really quick and then smoke it for a long time 
Mm-hmm. And charcoal, and mesquite, and blah blah blah. And I did that, and it was awful. It was like a brick, and everybody it was just some. If it doesn't come out, and everybody's really hungry, and they just they can't they can't even cut through it because it's that rough. And I'm like, oh, and it was a disaster. And you so. spent all that time making it right, and yeah, and hoping it would come out good because it came out good before, but it doesn't mean I was gonna. Come out. So anyway, long story, way longer, <laughs> <laughs> way longer. Like, so I said, I'm gonna do this right. So the thing about how you make the duck soft. Well, you're telling that story. I defrosted a duck. <laughs> So I use the spices and everything. It's a lot of spices for mm-hmm. Peking duck, a lot of spices. And you put it on the inside of it. But the thing, the real key to it is you need to steam it with the spices. Uh, you have to, no, no, I have to first keep it for two hours in the spices so it kind of marinates with the spices. And for two hours beforehand or overnight, preferably. Damn. The, in, the cavity on the inside and everything. And then you need to steam it for one hour in a steamer. And then... Um, then you cook it, and then it's it's really soft at that point, and then wow. the flavors are in there. It was very nice. I came out pretty damn good. Yeah, the plum sauce wasn't as good as as uh, I needed to work on that, mm-hmm. but it came out pretty damn good, right? Yeah. Does it yeah. look like a duck? Is there a duck? Is it just the body? Or is well, the thing a... about the Peking duck is the skin is, is really you got a nice and crisp skin with a little bit of duck, and then you have that with like your little burrito. Yeah, so remember when we burrito. went to the restaurant? Yeah, they served duck yeah. duck knee. <laughs> Yeah, birthday. duck knee. Was that the restaurant where Rob tried to get to gain admittance to the kitchen? Yes, yes, and they said no. What? I no. forgot why that happened. You just, Rob, you really? He just wanted to see the lobsters. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back there with you and check out the lobsters. I was like, No, you're not. <laughs> and Rob's like, No, yeah, I'm definitely coming back there. And he's like, You're not coming back here. <laughs> well, I wanted to see how he cooked the lobster. I know they didn't want you to see how they. Cooked no, they the didn't lobster. want me to see the lobster, or, or what they said was lobster. <laughs> No, but th- there's a beautiful. Camp. I thought, I thought they, was, they were going to kick us out. So at did some I. Point. Yeah. I absolutely did too. <laughs> well, usually I'm spoiled. You know, if you're a famous yeah. person, they mm-hmm. let you do stuff normally, but not these Chinese people. No, 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 no. you're out. Get out. Mm-hmm. But uh, you were very persistent. Well, there's a really that's the best dish at that one restaurant. Yeah, well, yeah. it's called the Peking Duck House. Yeah. Better be good. <laughs> better be good. It's like when you cook one thing, you better not fuck that up. Exactly. But um, no, I was thought you. you no, know, the, the, the what I thought you about the other time where we were talking about the place called the Seafood Harbor, or the Harbor Seafood. Yeah. What's it called? I don't know. Thirty nine, thirty nine Rosemead. I know that way out in San Gabriel, and they got this special. They, they it's a. It's not a Cantonese restaurant, but they serve this one Cantonese dish, and it's just Cantonese lobster, mm. and it is like with the little peppers, a little. Well, you know the kind of peppers. Mm-hmm. Little tiny red ones. What are those called? Um, chili chile. No, no, no. It's uh, I forgot. Chili chili. Serrano, I think. No, it's not serrano. It's no. a red. It's a red one. Little tiny oh, red one. Arbol. Arbol. Mm-hmm. Tree. Mm. Tree chilies. And so they cook it with a ton of that stuff. And literally, it seems like fifty cloves of garlic, right? Yes. And they stir fry. They stir fry the chili, and they stir fry the the garlic. They stir fry everything. And they oh yeah, it's, they fry mm-hmm. the shit out of everything. Mm-hmm. And then I always ask you, like, can you put not MSG? They look at me, uh, uh, not no MSG. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's like you always get the MSG. I'm sure. <laughs> of course, I love that about Rob. Like he requests mm-hmm. these things, knowing like, that yeah, it like might not like think, exactly like thinking that because I'm positive. I'm a po- unlike you guys. I'm a positive person. That's good. In, in denial. Yes. I'm very no, but you know what? Though? I just heard Elon Musk saying something really cool. What did he say? He said, "I prefer being positive and being wrong than being negative and being right." Mm, like that. That's so a good one. I want to be positive from now on. Hmm. Good. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that he has more influence over over you than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, not. When Elon you, Musk says it, it makes so much you, sense. It took you ten years to try to convince me, and then I hear Elon in Musk two in seconds. one mi- one minute YouTube interview. <laughs> <laughs> and what? Um, so what? Uh, so what do you think that you could do then? If you here's the thing, what was your? Uh, I, I mean, could, to cook and you do that, but what you know to make a living at that? You so you're having I like could a little bake, bakery. I would do it like that, or I could do um, life coaching. No, I don't think I'm good at that. I think I'm really bad at giving advice. To be honest. I know. I like, what was the what was the worst advice you've ever given to someone? Why would you think you're bad at advice? Because I'm really bad. Like what? <laughs> what bad advice have you given? I'm not even gonna say it. <laughs> but no, I think I've, I've given some bad advice about, unintentionally about, what? about relationships everything. Or relationships. Or hmm. Like I, what specifically? I don't know. Like it doesn't like, have to be somebody in this room, but no, you can say no. But I think I don't know. I feel like everyone's trying not to look at me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so what would be your life coaching bad advice that you've given? Now I want to know. No, I just think I'm not good at that. Because you're too honest? I think so. I think I have like a problem with being too direct sometimes. And that could be bad for some people. And or they can hurt people, and that's why I think the whole training for it is just to be to learn how to be subtle and talk to people in the way that they could actually. What if in- you specialize in like being a really negative life coach? That sounds awesome, like really direct. Yeah, yeah, I'm a direct life coach. Like, mm-hmm. believe me, you're gonna either get you're better. gonna hate me. Yeah. Believe me, you're yeah. gonna hate me. I think <laughs> so it could work. You go in after on your same card. You could show them a bridge to jump off. <laughs> Holy oh, shit! Oh god! <laughs> after they no, jump. no. Uh, but uh, no. But I think I would do that. I think I would be good. Um, I like decoration. Like mm-hmm. I think I could do like set design and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I like okay. that. Oh, that's and good. I think I'm good at it. Okay, that's still kind of show busy. You're right. You're right. Maybe like, or, or like even houses, like, you know, like setting up houses. Mm, staging. Staging. staging that houses. Thing, I think I would be good at that. Or remodeling, that kind of stuff. Okay. I could do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about the, what, what you cannot do? Like, what would be like the, the worst possible option for I, you? <laughs> like, you could suck at it and be like, no, this is not for me. Professional organizer. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I feel I like agree. I can I can help you clutter your place more. <laughs> <laughs> I can you can buy some more shit you don't need. You would be sitting and reading like their books. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you get stuff that you'll never use. <laughs> reading their books. We've hired you for a week, and you're still just reading the A's. <laughs> you haven't. Um, you have a but we're in your office. And I feel like there is a method to the madness kind of in your office. I will say like the, the more busy I am, the more organized I am. Mm-hmm. The That's more, not uh, true. Well, the, the more shit gets done. you were here when he said it. <laughs> I think so. I don't think I've ever seen you being organized, like ever, ever. No, but there's, there's, there, is some, uh, there is creativity in chaos. I Absolutely. Believe that. No, I believe that. I, I think chaos, because of you're an artist, that's why you're so disorganized, to be honest. But I think destruction and, and like the idea of mixing stuff up and seeing kind of what happens from that, I think is part of the creative process. I also think it's part of the destructive process because I guess creation is destruction and coming out, you know, that, it's both. It's, they're both connected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you have to uh, uh, kind of um, have both the interconnectedness to that stuff. You can't have day without night. You can't have night without day. You know, what you see right now isn't exactly 100% bright white light. It's like light dark. Mm -hmm. And at night, it's not like 100% dark. It's like dark light. Right. And so... um, uh, So it's it's a combination. The the interconnectedness things of of everything. What I'm trying to say is, excuse, I'm coming up with an excuse for not being organized. Mm. (laughs) Yes. No, but I I do think it's creative. I do do think like it is is creativeness to it. And once I get sucked into it from an excitement point, Mm -hmm. that's this. But you guys, you got to do it when you're also just, you know, perspiration, not just when you're excited. It's easy to come up with stuff when you're enthusiastic Mm -hmm. about it. It's when you're like you at your CBS job. Mm -hmm. You're not excited about it. I'm excited. <laughs> Jeez, what are you talking about? He it's loves right. it. You know what? You know no, what? I'm, I'm saying like it's there's sometimes in there you got to muscle it. Oh well, yeah, I think with any job you gotta get in there and do the work, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean I do enjoy like I enjoy editing. I know you hate that. I hate editing. I would not be able to do that. I can't concentrate on it like for more like than uh, two I get, seconds. <laughs> <laughs> no, it give me a half hour, forty minutes. I got to take a break. There's only so much I can do. But then, but the concentrated. Beats of getting stuff together, and it's all instinctual. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, I feel like I can do this. So what else would you be good at? You know what? I'll tell you what I would be the worst mm-hmm. at. What would you be, would the, you worst be the worst at? If I had to drive a huge truck to okay. deliver something, and then carefully drive it around a parking lot, and then like back it up somewhere. Oh, really? Like whenever I see a guy with a big truck, just, you know, like trying to like get the back, like he did. Mm-hmm. I cannot drive. I have no... Even in a regular car, like I can't back into a spot in a normal car. And so that would be like my, I feel like the first day I would just leave the truck somewhere and go home. <laughs> just like I can't get it out of there. It's there forever. I, I just told don't. you when I was delivering flowers when I was like 16 years old. No, I didn't know this. I told you this. I, I was just, I was delivering flowers in like a truck on a hot summer day. And I saw my friends playing softball. And I pulled over and I played a couple innings and all the flowers died. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you never told me that. It was like a friend. I didn't know it's that. amazing. It was like a friend of the family owned the flower shop. He's like, Robbie, 
I can't have you delivering <laughs> the flowers. In the flowers, you deliver them and they're dead. Oh, that's amazing. People don't want dead flowers. They don't want, not even at Halloween, they don't want dead flowers. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry, and I got fired for that. I can't have you do it anymore, Robbie. That's hilarious. You're going to have to tell Marvin that I'm sorry, but my dad was Marvin. But anyway, so you'd be bad at driving a truck? I'm I think so I bad. could do a drive if I had to be a driver. No, you're, you're a terrible solid. driver. You oh. think? This is, this, this is direct life coaching, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you're a terrible driver. No, I could be a cab driver. No, you, mm-hmm. well, That's, yes. I think you guys are In agreeing Mexico to, City. to agree. Huh? In Mexico City. I just well, last night we went out with the, a friend of ours, Miguel, mm-hmm. from Mexico City. He's from Mexico City, and he was nervous <laughs> that I was so driving. So that says a lot mm. that I was driving. Yeah, because oh, I was saying, uh, "What did he say last night? No, 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 you slow down. You got a car there." And I went like, <laughs> and I was like, "He said I'm fine. I never slowed down. I just went around it, you know." <laughs> yeah. I think but, I like driving with Rob. It's like being in a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes you go so fast, you feel like you're on a roller yeah. coaster. Has he done that? Yeah. In the Tesla, it's fine. Uh, I'm, I drive a little more conservative, Patricia. Oh, sorry about that. Sometimes. Not always. Sometimes I'll hear this. Slow down. Yeah. Valuable cargo. A precious cargo. Yeah. (laughs) That's what gets me. We have the kids and he drives too fast sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Well, so also those cars go damn fast. I mean, I gotta say that you drive fast, but also, also kind of shitty sometimes. What the (laughs) fuck? What? This is some kind of shitty. (laughs) Yeah, like you get too close to the cars and then you sometimes you cut them, you know, off. So it's like, hmm. Not, I, I, not I, I, good, I, I, not good, Schneider, <laughs> not good. My dad was the worst driver. <laughs> he says his eyesight was really, really going. I mean, mm-hmm. mine's going a little bit, but I'm like, okay, mine's going a lot. But my dad's was really, really going, and he was only allowed to drive in the day, you know, Whoa. the last 10 years of his life. So he would just drive in the daytime. And I remember I was with my buddy Craig Frazier, and we were driving, and... um he said, oh, there's Big Marv. My dad, my dad had this big Lincoln Continental. And he's like, he did, he was coming to a stop sign and we're driving, you know, perpendicular <laughs> to him. And he's just like, oh, he almost fucking hit us. <laughs> because my dad would stop at the stop sign where his body was at the stop sign. <laughs> and he still had, he had 12 feet of car That's in front amazing. of him. But he would be at the stop sign, oh but 12 God. feet, he'd have 12 feet of Lincoln Continental in front That's of him. That's incredible. Was there always a driver's test? Or did you just get to drive it at some point? At that point, um... California is one of those very friendly, driver-friendly places mm-hmm. where they just like, they'll just, unless you really fuck up, they'll just keep mailing you your driver's license mm-hmm. for like 20 or 30 years. Still to this day, they just mail it to you. Wow. But my dad, uh, you know, his eyesight was gone, so he had like, you know, he would literally would bring his grandchild, and his grandchild would kind of whisper to him what the cut, what the uh, what the letters were. I'm oh, not boy. kidding. Wow. Go, D. D. Oh, like for the eye test. C. C. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. His, his hearing was good, but his eye test was bad. You know what I think uh, you do sometimes that I don't like? Oh, God. When you're driving? What? No, I'm just going to say when you're driving. Don't worry. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> that narrows it down. <laughs> no. That sometimes you're driving and you turn mm-hmm. to look at me or to look at the girls. And I think, like, it's a little too long. <laughs> Do you think sometimes he thinks it's a television show? Like, you know, when people just turn around and talk to people because <laughs> you're not really driving? Yeah, that concerns me. Because sometimes I'm actually in a scene where I'm not really driving. <laughs> right, it's just a green screen. And so I do notice I, I do notice your eyes go a little yes. wider the longer that I speak to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also kind of like, mm-hmm. I drove a motorcycle when I was very young, and I do think that that was the greatest thing that ever happened to me for driving purposes mm-hmm. because you're so scared that anybody could kill you at any moment because oh, yeah. anybody could kill you at any moment. They're not... They, People aren't trained to look for motorcycles. I'm barely, I mean, I used to ride one and I barely notice it sometimes. And so like, you know, and I know to look for them, Mm -hmm. but that it's just like, so driving that way. So even when I look at you, I'm kind of like in my mind, you know, counting when somebody could well, what about brakes. like instead of having it in your mind, you can just look. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do this bit. You just reminded me where you would, I would drive mm-hmm. and say like you were sitting next to me in the car mm-hmm. and Rob was in the back seat. What I do is I just give you like a little nudge and then I turn around and talk to Rob and you take over the steering wheel uh-huh. and I just keep talking to him. <laughs> we used to do this all the time like, hey man, what, where were we going to the, and you're actually driving the car, yeah. but it looks like, like you're bits. looking the wrong way. I like way. bits that a, can kill you. It's a fun bit. You should call that bits that can kill you. <laughs> Bits of death. Mm-hmm. Speaking of bad driving, I, when I was moving Speaking to... Speaking of... Uh, you remember that video? I don't mean to interrupt you, but like... No. Remember that like Faces of Death video? Yeah. This is like before the internet really started. It's like 96 or 97. What is that? I remember Faces of 96 Death. 96 is like, it's like Faces of Death. Mm-hmm. And it was basically, you know, people who died and it was a video or whatever it was. 
And it was like, and of it was what? It was like just the before the internet. Yeah, yeah I remember this. Video of it was before like YouTube. People? It was like faces of death, and it was like a videotape, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, I'm wondering. I never now. saw it. I never saw it. But I just heard of it. I wonder. I thought. I thought I heard years later that it was fake. Because I remember as a young mm. kid being like, "Oh, I want to see faces, faces of, of death." death. Yeah, it was like some horror movie, but supposedly... Oh. Like Larry Bubbles Brown, the great comedian from San Francisco, he had this horrible book called... Uh, and it was like the black box, and it was all black box recordings of like plane crashes. Oh, God, that's And then he, he would read those out, and it was just like, you know, some bigger... It's like, you know, you hear that, Bob? <laughs> oh, my God. You hear that banging? Yeah, I hear that. Turn off engine one, Bob. Let's say that. Okay, okay. okay, to crank it back up. Okay. It's not that engine. All right, turn off the engine two, Bob. Okay. Okay, turn it back on, Bob. No, it's not that. All right. I still hear the banging. You hear the banging? Yeah, I hear it bang. And then other people come in like, we hear the banging. Yeah, we hear the banging. All right, turn off engine one and engine two. And then it's like, sound of impact. (laughs) We're going down, Bob. Oh, my God. And then it turned out somebody just left a nozzle in. It would have been perfectly fine. They just somebody left the gas nozzle in, and it was going bang, bang, bang. It was banging. The hose was banging on the back of the plane, and like they just turned off. They're trying to figure out what the noise was. And oh, it was just damn. The, the nozzle. Jesus. Sound of impact. <laughs> and Jesus. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so Larry's the darkest. You know, his his all his material is very dark, and uh, so he would like go on the, the the local radio show and read these off, and they were very dark, but also wow, sorry, kind of funny. I was driving. We're going once. down, Dad. <laughs> you know? I can't read oh, that God. stuff. Like, that can't. stuff scares me. Yeah. yeah, I get too anxious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like anything. What makes you anxious? Uh, I would say whatever that uh, uh, triggers fear mm-hmm. makes me anxious. Okay, like, but, but at the same time, you you like that stuff because we watch those shows, those Fatal Attraction shows. Oh well, that's where those different. animals. When animals attack, when yeah. animals. When animals fuck up people. Well, yeah. But I think, you know what what it is? I I could watch those shows because I know I'm not like, there's no relation, you know, like Mm -hmm. uh, between me and that. Like, I know. And it it already happened. Like, I will never. Yeah. And I know that I will never have a tiger, you know, like, but I know that I am going to fly on a plane at some point. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. So I don't want to have that in my head. You know, yeah. like like I kind of I could watch things that I know that will probably never happen right. to me yeah. because I'm not gonna put myself in that position. Mm-hmm. We but were, the other ones make me anxious. No, we were doing the comedy tour like a couple of years ago, and I won't mention the comedian's name. One of the comedians was like, you know, we we're working with, and he was. Uh, I mean, we had some. I mean, when you're in the small private plane, it's like it's, it's sometimes you're gonna have some like. It's a small plane. It's a tube. Mm-hmm. And we had some turbulence that was like really rough turbulence, like a boom, 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 boom. And, like, and I was like, and you know, you're a little nervous, but like I'm a, I'm a fly almost every week somewhere for m- most of the last 15 years. And he literally, his face was melting. He was just like, yeah. <laughs> and I went like, even if you die, don't die like that. Yeah, I mean, even if we were yourself. going down, just go down. Be, come on, man. Bite mm-hmm. a bullet. Be a man. Don't do this right now, you know. Yeah. And then the worst part is we didn't crash. We were fine. And, and, and he melted down like that. <laughs> to me, I thought like, oh, you can't do that. No. You he can't. Was you gotta, he was afraid. Yeah, you can't It's be okay to be afraid. It's okay to feel. I, don't, I, don't, I think you got to I think you got to suck it up, man. Don't show it. I was on a plane once and we got hit by lightning. Really? And then that's what I thought happened. It was like it, it was like a bolt of some kind and it lit up the thing and the lights dimmed. Oh. And then nobody said anything. Like they didn't come on and go, hey, it, that was this or, mm-hmm. for like two and a half minutes. That's a long time. It was just a really long time. And then the pilot comes on and goes, and I've been thinking of like, what could it mean? He comes on and he goes, oh, that was lightning. Don't worry. Like the, the plane is used <laughs> to it. Like it's okay. And then I was like, I think he was just thinking of that shit for two and a half minutes. Like mm-hmm. coming up with something. Mm-hmm. Like maybe, hey, maybe it was, you know. Adam Sandler had it was with um, one of his buddies and like his other friend, Tim Hurley, was so drunk that he passed out and they literally were going to land at, like, you know, in New York, they're going to land at, they, they, and then the pilot said, we're going to have to do emergency landing. We have lost our hydraulics, which was a big thing in the, in the late 80s, early mm-hmm. 90s when planes would lose their hydraulics. And a lot of times they would crash and that was it. And so they were just, you know, before this was happening, he was drunk and they were putting peanuts in his ears. You know, just just fooling around, and all of a sudden, they say, you know, they're 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 kind of drunk too, I guess. And he said, uh, you know, and they said it's an emergency thing, and he's like, should we wake him up? And what if we don't? What if it's his last moment? 
and then we don't. And he's, you know, what we got to like, he's, we got to wake him up. We can't let him. And then he said, well, he says, let him sleep. He went, oh, no, you know, blah, blah, blah. So they just let him sleep. And so, and they were just like, and they was like, you know, they, they, they had to go around and around until they got lower and lower because they couldn't use the flaps, right? So they just had to, and they, they did an emergency landing. They all survived. And, they, and then he was still asleep through all that. And then he woke up and he woke up and said, you okay, buddy? Dude, that was the craziest thing. He was like, I can't hear. I can't hear. Because <laughs> they forgot. He, they forgot they put peanuts in his ears. <laughs> I can't hear. Oh, my God. I can't hear. It's amazing. <laughs> oh God. So he panicked anyway. Uh, Holy shit. <laughs> would you want to be woken up if the plane was going down and you were asleep? If I'm ever with you guys, I would like to sleep. I would like to sleep too. Would you like to you sleep? sleep? Yes. Yeah. No, I'll wake you up. I'd wake you both up. <laughs> Even though we just And asked? I'd wake up, you know what I'd say? I can't hear. <laughs> oh my God. It depends. Even though you just asked? I would say if I am if I am flying by myself, mm-hmm. I prefer not being waking up. If I'm flying with the girls, mm-hmm. wake me up. Yes, okay. for sure. Because I need to Take care of those kids. Oh. Yeah. Mm. You know, there's a while, too, when we were thinking about flying, we didn't want to all fly together. Mm-hmm. Or at least fly se- what, what What's the plan? I don't even I remember. I remember, yeah. But we were, like, thinking about flying separately. Oh, yeah. You don't want to be in a plane together. Yes. Because then your kids wouldn't, if there was an accident. Mm-hmm. You don't want to lose crash. both your parents. Right. Mm-hmm. But really, what problem is it of yours? You know what I mean? You lose both At parents. that point. <laughs> <laughs> we're going down, Dad. No. <laughs> No, I, I don't think so. I don't think it's, it's the happen. safest place. It's the safest place you could be is up and flying in a plane. Mm-hmm. How did that happen? How did what happen? Like that? Did the like, plane safer like, than a car? Yeah. I yeah. don't know. Well, because you know you're up there, you get your own. They give you your own space. You have like a thousand feet of just you. They don't allow two planes to fly at thirty-two thousand feet. But it's kind of crazy, still, right? Still, like it's like, flying up there. Like I don't think I could be a pilot. It's about maintenance, you know. It's about just they they keep the maintenance going on those things, and they fly them. They they don't stop the plane. They don't say like we gotta let that those engines rest. They gotta keep them going. Hmm. You know, no, they know what they know what they're as you like to say. They know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it is safe. Well, because in a car, all these idiots driving a car, you know, mm-hmm. like um, Chris Rock had that great joke in his last tour. He's talking about like uh, the police and talking about I know. He said, like, you know, the, the, when the police are having problems, you know, sh- shooting unarmed mm-hmm. African-American men, you know, young men. He said, like, uh, he said, well, hey, most of our police officers are good. He's, you can't have, like, most. <laughs> you can't, like, American Airlines go, most of our pilots are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, there's a few bad eggs. <laughs> For we, the can't most have, part. we can't have any bad eggs. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he was great that last tour. Oof. He's always great. I think a pilot recently was uh, arrested. For what? Because he was uh, drunk. Drunk driving? No way. That happens, mm-hmm. you know, because you think about it. On your job, sometimes you're a stand-up comedian. Sometimes you go out, you have some few drinks. Sure. And then you gotta, I'll bet it's free drinks. Yeah, but then, like, sometimes, how about you go out partying, and the next thing you have to do your job, which oh, is yeah. flying other people, and you're still a little drunk. Just because you technically slept for a few hours doesn't mean you're not... 100% sober. No, but this guy, I think, apparently went to the bathroom and they found like an empty bottle of vodka, like a little one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he was uh, still drinking before flying. Oof. Yeah. Well, that's not good. That's an alcoholic. Yeah. He, that I, sounds like I, a movie what I, with yeah. Denzel. Denzel Washington. Yeah. Well, what what happened is I think they were doing this random second, uh, you know, checkpoints or whatever in uh, at the airport. And he was trying to avoid the second one, the second screening. And then he went to the bathroom, and then he drank this thing, and then he was kind of waiting, you know, for that second uh, mm-hmm. check to go. And then they noticed his uh, like be- uh, weird behavior. They got him. Damn! Before he got on the plane. Before he I'm got sure on the plane. he would have been fine. Probably would have been fine once he sat down, got behind the wheel, eat some crackers. Yeah, so it's not like there's a lot of traffic up there. Hit on a flight attendant. I don't know. I don't want any. Uh, no, these are some, yeah, that's that's a thing. I don't want uh, any pilot that is not like... 100% soby dopey. Mm-hmm. Soby and rested and happy. <laughs> <laughs> and happy is a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Loving well, they have that job. new law now. You can't be a pilot in there by yourself. Which right. makes sense. Yeah, you got to have somebody else in there just in case a guy decides to become suicidal. Makes Good. perfect sense. And that's why, like, I always think they got to keep the the door open now. Mm-hmm. Don't you want to? Don't you get it? Don't you want to take a good look? But that pilot before. How you doing today, Captain? You all right? Feeling pretty good. <laughs> Getting along with the wife, all right. <laughs> Didn't make any financial decisions that are making you feel a little suicidal. Lots to live for. Yeah. Good. 
Nice. Want to see the grandkids again one day? Yeah. So uh, on that note, so how do people get a hold of Patricia Maya? Ah, oh, they can find me on Instagram. They can? Yes. I am Patricia Maya. And also I have a YouTube channel. If uh, you like... Um, Wonderful you know, cooking. Cooking. Easy, yeah. easy recipes. Where is that? It's uh, YouTube. And you can find me as Patricia Maya Schneider. Awesome. Or you can go on my Instagram. I am Patricia Maya. And click um, on my bio. I'll take you directly to my YouTube channel. I'll do it. I'll do it. Awesome. Sounds good. That food's good. And what about uh, Jamie Lissa? Where do they find you when you're not on the CBS lot? I'm there at Instagram. I am Jamie Lissa on Instagram. How I many really people you got on there now? I got a few few thou, maybe 30 of them. That's good. Are I'm, you, I'm a straight well, up Instagram. Are you get? Are you like a, what do they call it? A uh, Influencer? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I just post. Only, only in real life? Yeah. So you're like a life influencer? I'm like a, a I, but influencer. I'm, I'm <laughs> an influencer. An uninfluencer. <laughs> I'm an uninfluencer. I love that Instagram though. I've I've moved completely over. I don't use, use anything else. Yeah. yeah well, me inst- Instagram is uh, for entertainment and fun. Yeah. Twitter's for anger. <laughs> <laughs> All true. right. So this is see what happens. And um, David, are you going to get my dates up here? You got some dates coming up, Jamie. I don't know them offhand. Oh, wait, oh, wait, so but to finish this, yes. So why would you be? Uh, you would have like a little uh, grocery store, or you would be making sandwiches. Like, why would you be? Mm. What would you do? I'd be a life coach <laughs> for a living. I would for, be for Rob's a li- first client. For um, I think I would be. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I. God, that's a good question. I think I'd want to go into like the the health business. You know. Mm-hmm. I think I'd do that. I think I'd want to like uh, not knowing any, not knowing anything about it, but just still giving people advice about mm-hmm. health. That's I'd great. be like a health. No, but you do know a lot because you've been reading a lot of things. I would. I, li- have- I would like to help with with people's health. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to say that a bunch of things that Rob had said mm-hmm. in the last ten years. You do know that sometimes I yeah I would go like yeah right. Now there are documentaries of it. Mm-hmm. Like, like like what? Like oh my god, he was right. Like the Teflon stuff. Like yeah. you've been knowing about that for years, and I remember that you know all of my pants stick, and mm-hmm. I hate that. But now I saw that, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I'm so glad that one he knows. company decided to poison the enti- entire human species, and that company's Dupont, and they did it. They poisoned everybody on the planet, which is awful. But the eggs, they just flip right over. Yeah, yes. do you know what I mean? How do small you- price to pay? Yeah, for 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 eggs. Huevitos, <laughs> as we say in this house. Huevitos. Like kids say, huevitos. All right. So what about you, Jamie? Jamie? I think we figured out that if I lost this job, I would be uh, fucking poor and no. not have a job. I don't know if I, I don't no, think I came what? up with any, I would like to be a driver, like a no, Uber, Uber driver. driver. You just said, you just said would you prefer doing that? Not or, a truck. Or a, or a fitness something or no? So you'd be a fitness, fitness guy. You'd have to own your own gym. You know a lot Maybe. about diets and a lot of exercises. Yeah, yeah he could true. be like a fitness guru. I did, a, I did some personal training for a while. Okay. Did okay, you like it you or no? I didn't love it because it some when people get, give up, mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. just, it's its really frustrating. Like, and I don't know, maybe I just wasn't a good motivator at what the time. I was a young like, man. Like, uh, when you were fat for a little while. Mm-hmm. What was that all about? <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's so mean. You, now we have two direct life coaches. <laughs> I just went through a period of, uh, I always wait. I when w- I met you, you were heavy. I was very heavy. You weren't very heavy. No, you weren't very heavy. You were just a little bit. You're not ripped like you are now. I weighed two. I weighed like two twenty five at one point. I but weighed one eighty five. You were able right to hold now. it. You were able to hold it at thirty pounds. This one time, you just had more cheek. Cheeks going on. So Rob, so I didn't know Rob that well. We worked together a couple times, <laughs> and I told him like, "Oh, I'm going to try to get in shape. Like, I'm not drinking beer anymore and stuff." And so I went to the gym, and Rob went to the gym with me. And he like looked at me and he goes, "Wow, man, you look like you lost like ten pounds or something. You look really good." I was like working out, mm-hmm. and my arms looked okay. And then um, I was like, "Wow, that makes me feel really good." And so then that night at the club, uh, Rob comes in. I'm wearing a suit because Rob used to really like when we dressed up. Mm-hmm. And Rob goes, uh, "Hey, man," he goes, "Yeah, look looked great in the gym today." He goes, "Too bad, uh, look fat in a suit. Still look fat." <laughs> and I go, 
<laughs> he, he said maybe 20 more pounds. Did you really say that? I was just being an asshole. Oh, my God. He was right, though. I've seen the pictures. I'm not surprised. No, you look good, man. I, I'm but a mess. I, I'm a personal mess. But I'm gonna. I'm, I'm joining the gym right down the street. You heard me. Really? Okay, here's... Okay, but wait, dude, you didn't let him finish. So then what happened? So what happened? Oh, I just got that my... That was it? I just think I just got my... You just got your life. shit together? I really... A lot of that was... I was on the radio. Yeah. I think it was kind of unhappy. Yeah. And I was eating a lot of like really bad food at night and like drinking a bunch of beers to sort mm-hmm. of just get through it. Man, you put it together though. You did a great job. And I started working with you guys and things got a little got a little easier. Dude, that, you were respect. great. And great it's on great. You have great, great on real Rob. And great discipline. And great discipline. You do, man. Thank I, you guys. Love Jamie you guys. eats between like two and eight. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Eating window. Yeah, and he does he's sticking to it. And mm-hmm. he works out. He, he does uh my favorite thing you do is the sprints. I do, I do push ups, yeah. I do the sprints. He does sprints really early in the morning and you stick to it, man. I'm you proud, can just do proud five it takes you. nine minutes. The other day, me and Patricia were about to write. We were about to start writing. It was like 9.45, and we were going to start mm-hmm. writing at 10. And I called my buddy, and I'm like, dude, I've, I'm, I'm so stupid. I should have gotten up earlier and worked out. And he goes, dude, sprints. And I did five sprints and was on the phone with you at And you did great. 10. I know you're sticking to it. I'm proud of you. Okay, August 9th. These are some dates. Mm-hmm. Uh, August 9th, I'm going to be in Plymouth, New Hampshire, at the Flying Monkey Performing Arts Center. And I want to apologize to all the people who... Uh, who had to uh, change their date and come and see me at a different time. And But its I swear to God, I'm going to be there Friday, August 9th. I will be there. And, okay, Saturday, August 31st, I'm going to be at the Rising Sun Casino in Indiana. That's the Rising Star Casino Resort. Rising Star Casino Resort in Indianapolis. And uh, Indiana. And then, of course, one of my favorite comedy clubs you'll ever... It's a very uh, odd place for a comedy club, but it's actually really good. It's, it's the Comedy Zone in Jacksonville, Florida. One of the best places, and we've been there. We have. The, we did the Real Rob thing there, right? You were there. I met Patricia for the very first time mm-hmm. at that club. Yep. That's right, and that's in Jacksonville, Florida. My, our good buddy Fred runs that. Comedy Zone, Jacksonville, Florida. That's September 20th and the 21st. There'll be four shows. And then I'll be up uh, at one of the favorite places uh, uh, in the world that I love, Seattle, Washington, at a tiny comedy club called Laughs Comedy Club. And that's just uh, one night, uh, Seattle, Washington, Thursday, September 26th, Laughs Comedy Club. And then the 27th of September, Friday, I'll be at Coquitlam, B.C. That's the Molson Canadian Theater, Hard Rock. Coquitlam, that's got to be British Columbia. And uh, that's the Molson uh, Canadian Theater, Hard Rock. And I'll be there for one night. And then uh, State Line the next week, State Line, Nevada. The Mont Blue Casino Resort Spa, that's October 4th. Only a couple more, guys. And then Ronard Park, October 5th, Saturday, at Sally Tomatoes. And then um, I'll be at the Blue Lake Casino, October 6th. And then Caroline's uh, for the week of October 11th through the 13th and hopefully Jamie Lasso will be there and we're going to be performing together all of us by the way and we are going to be at La Jolla the comedy store for the 25th through the 27th of October and then we're going to be performing together and we had to again move this gig because of our TV show Real Rob uh, it will be a Real Rob TV show with Patricia Maya the great Jamie Lasso and uh, the Real Rob show at Cove Haven Resort and that's Lakeville, Pennsylvania, and the Cove Haven Resort. That's going to be December 7th. Oh, yeah. Three of us will be there. So that'll be fun. Can't wait. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. This is See What Happens, where you can see what happens. <laughs> <laughs>